curious beings. We invest time in thinking about all sorts of things. For example, what is the origin of the universe? We first had mythology such as Greek creation myth, which in the beginning, the world was in a state of nothingness, which they called chaos. And suddenly, from light, came Gaia, Mother Earth. And from her came Uranus, the sky, along with other old gods which are called primordials, like Pontus, the primordial god of the oceans. And hence, we have the Titans and the Olympian gods, such as Zeus and Athena. Then we have the biblical explanation of how the world was created by God. And now, as we prefer a more scientific way of looking into the world, we have the Big Bang Theory. So, now we have settled the mystery of our past. We as a collective, turn our attentions to the future. What will the future be like? Historian would tell us that the best way to predict the future is by studying the past. And we'll do exactly the same in this video. I will introduce you a group of futuristic illustrations titled Along the Mill, which in English it literally means in year 2000, produced by a group of French artists at the turn of the 20th century. They are the visual record of how these imaginative French artists envisioned the life in the year 2000 would be like with scientific advancement. Before I start showing you and discussing with you these interesting illustrations, allow me to give you some background information. Between 1870 and 1914, there was the Second Industrial Revolution. For those of you who don't know the differences between the First, Second, and the Third Industrial Revolution. Well, the First Industrial Revolution used the water and steam power to mechanize production. The second used the electric power to create mass production. And the third used electronics and information technology to automate production. Inventions of light bulb, telephone, gasoline powered car, and aircraft all happened during this era of great leap of scientific advancement. We've all of you now familiarized with the background of the creation of these beautiful creations. We can finally jump into the appreciation of them. The first work that I want to show you is related to you, about education. It is titled At School. You can see in this picture, the artist placed us in a classroom setting. We are looking at a bunch of students having a lesson. But there is something strange about it. There's no blackboard, and the teacher, represented by the old man in a suit, is not standing in front of the students. Where is he standing, and what is he doing? He's standing near a bookshelf on the right, putting books into a machine chunked by his teaching assistant. And if you look closely, the machine has some wires which go up to the ceiling and come back down above where the students sit. There are headphones connected to the wires, and the students are all wearing their headphones listening attentively. And now, you should know that this is how the artist envisioned how school life would be like in year 2000. The artist actually thought that books could be turned into audio materials to be consumed by students. What do you think about this prediction? Do you think that this has come true? Now, let's look at another one. It is titled Intensive Breeding. This time, the artist invited us to a farm. In this farm, there is a farm girl in red. She is carrying some eggs with her basket. She is putting eggs into a machine. But what is this machine used for? It has a big clockwork and a thick rubber band. Steam is coming out of it. We might have an idea of what this machine is for. If we look at the other end of it, there are chicks coming out of the machine. So, this machine helps eggs to hatch. What do you think about this one? Did the artist predict the future correctly? Let's try one more. This one is titled A Model Kitchen. Obviously, as the title suggested, we are situated in a kitchen. We can see three cooks working including a kid cook. Mind you, 
This illustration was drawn when child labor was legal. So, what are we looking at? We don't see the cooks cooking with normal cooking utensils like cutting boards, knives, or a frying pan. What are we looking at is a very complicated set of laboratory apparatus in front of us. The cooks are making meals with laboratory apparatus. Does this remind you of lab meat? Isn't it amazing? There are many more illustrations in this series, and I will put them on the screen one by one now. You can try to pause the video and look at the pictures in details with the amount of time you would like. Try to think about what the ambition of the future of these artists are, and think if their predictions are correct. A tailor of the latest fraction. This time, we are in the tailor shop, and this is not any ordinary tailor shop where the tailor has to hand measure the customers, or manually cut out or sew the fabrics. This is a tailor shop with ultra advanced technology. On the right. We have a customer standing next to a measuring machine that would automatically kick all the measurements. And on the left, we have a machine that is linked up to the shelves of the fabrics at the back. And by going through the inside of the black machine on the left, a ready-to-wear suit is produced. Madame at her toilette. In the next illustration, we are being a little perfect. We are looking at a lady preparing herself in her dressing room. As you can see, there is a lot of machinery in the dressing room. There is no longer a dressing table; it has been replaced by a control panel full of buttons, and the lady is pressing a button on the panel. What happens is that there are mechanical arms hanging above her head, helping her to do her hair, and there is an arm extending from the mirror on her left, with a powder brush on it. Having the lady to put on her foundation or powder, this is makeup made easy imagined by the artist. Electric scrubbing. We have looked at the kitchen. We have looked at the toilet. This time, we are moving on the living room. We are looking at May cleaning the living room, but the May is not doing it herself. She has help. There is a machine with wheels. It has arms that are holding a sponge and a scrub brush. The machine cleans the floor by itself, while the maid only guides it with a rope. This is basically the idea of robot vacuum that has been realized. The new fangled barber. By now, you should have noticed a pattern. The artist imagined a future where human labor would be replaced by robots. For example, in the new fangled barber, the barber only operates the machine. By lowering the level and pushing the button, while the customers are having a haircut from the robots, these illustrations also visually record an obsession that people at that time had, which is flying. But this is understandable, as I've mentioned before, aircraft was first invented in 1903, right in the Second Industrial Revolution. People were discussing the extent of which flying can be applied to daily life. In the real postman, we can see a postman delivering a mail to a man's balcony, riding a flying machine that was clearly inspired by the shape and the aerodynamics of birds. In the aerial flyman, the firefighters put on butterfly-like wings to put out fire that is on the rooftop and to save a damsel in distress. Not only were the public service we imagined. Ways of commuting were also the highlights of such flying discussion. In aerial cab station, artists imagined taxis to have wings and fly across the city to pick up people. And with aerial traffic, we must have aerial police to keep air traffic in order. In aviation police, we can see personalized flying cars have been popularized. And police with bat-like wings are flying to regulate the traffic in the air. As humans' imagination cannot be limited by the height of the sky, it equally shall not be limited by the depth of the ocean. In fishing for seagulls, people take scuba diving as a recreational activity. They simply put on breathing helmets and they go down to the sea to fish for seagulls. In divers on horseback. 
people with their breathing helmets on, ride gigantic seahorses as transportation underwater. And in a coquet party, the artists even took the most popular sport on earth, croquet, and put it on the seafloor. People happily play the ball games with the breathing helmets on. In a race in the Pacific, imagination once wild, the artists believed that we could hold fish race under sea, just like the way we hold horse race on land. There were spectators clapping and cheering for the contestants, and there would be flags flying underwater. Isn't human imagination extraordinary? So I hope that now I have walked you through these wonderful illustrations, you will have a better understanding of how people in the past imagined the future. How many of them do you think have been realized? How many have not? What have you learned from these past predictions? And how about your own predictions of the future? What does it include? Leave us a comment down below, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye!